So with every new year, Apple always releases an iPhone around this time of year, September, October. And alongside of those iPhones, there's always a new iOS update. And in those iOS updates, there's always one big headlining feature to entice users like myself and yourself to update to iOS 16, for instance, this year. But those headlining features that Apple normally announces alongside those iOS updates are more for show than they are for function. So in this video, I wanna talk about some of those nuanced features that Apple releases and releases silently that actually makes a difference in your day-to-day -day life from a productivity standpoint, from an efficiency standpoint, and also sometimes for a more fun experience overall. But without further ado, here are 27 features that you didn't know your iPhone could do, and these are for iOS 14, 15, and iOS 16. So without further ado, let's talk about them. So let's get started with some of these more nuanced features which will make your life a little bit easier when using your iPhone, and these are in no particular order. So number one has to be the ability to go backwards in pages even though you're very deep into maybe a settings menu. So if you're in the settings menu and you're like four, five, six steps deep into the settings menu, the last thing you wanna do is press that backspace button on the top left over and over and over again to get you back to the general home. So with this, and this works natively throughout every single application, it's built into these applications, you just hold down that back button and then you'll get a menu, a stacked menu of where you are inside of that structure and you can just skip all the way to the back. So that's tip number one. Tip number two has to be the ability to interact digitally with the volume rocker. So if you press the actual physical buttons up and down, then you get that nice little volume rocker on the left-hand side of the iPhone. If you actually grab that with your finger, it'll enlarge the volume rocker and you can actually move it and get a more precise actual setting of your volume when deciding how loud or how, you know, not loud, you want your volume to be. Tip number three is very similar. It applies in that same vein, but this time with actual scrolling through web pages or scrolling through endless applications. So if you're on Safari and you're scrolling up and down the web page, you can see that the slider shows up on the right hand side. You can grab that as well and then quickly go through a Safari page without having to flick your finger on the actual screen itself. Tip number four has to be the ability to use your three fingers to bring up the shortcut menu inside of a you know text editing application. So for instance, in the notes application, if you're in there and you just tap with three fingers, you get the cut, copy, paste that you would get when you maybe right click on the computer or right click on your iPad. So using three fingers brings up that shortcut menu that you can easily access. And then same thing with those three fingers, if you actually type something out in the notes application and swipe to the right with the three fingers, it'll redo. And if you swipe left, it'll undo whatever you were doing inside of the notes application. And again, this is a native feature. So most applications, even third-party applications can have this functionality. So if we stay inside of that note, tip number six has to be the ability to move your cursor around using the space bar on the keyboard. So pull up your keyboard, long press on the space bar, and then you have kind of like a mouse trackpad situation on the actual iPhone itself to get more precision on where you want your cursor to go. And then tip number seven is the classic magnifier. This has been around for a very long time. Apple has iterated on what it looks like over the years, but same thing applies. So if you long press where your cursor is, a magnifier will come up. And again, you can be a little bit more precise when it comes to where you want your cursor to be. I like the spacebar functionality a little bit better, but the actual magnifier is a little bit better for real you know, precision of the cursor and where you want it to be. The next cool one, which I actually use a lot during my day-to-day -day basis, is if you go into Control Center and you have your timer in your Control Center, if you don't, you just quickly add it through the settings menu, but once you have your timer in the Control Center, you can long press on that timer to manually set a timer directly from your Control Center, and I do this a lot, especially while cooking and maybe waiting for rice to cook or waiting for something in the oven to finish up. This next one has also been around for a very, very long time, but not a lot of people talk about it, and I feel like not a lot of people actually use it as they should. So this is the text replacement, and I use this a lot for my email specifically. So for instance, if I type in FRS, then my email will be suggested to me, and just all I have to do is click on that, and then I'm good to go. All you have to do is go into your settings menu, go into general, go into the keyboard settings, and then go to text replacement, and then in there, you can literally do whatever you want. So if you have maybe a URL that you always go to and you just want it to be like XX and then that URL shows up, you can do that. Same thing with an email, same thing with initials. The default one is the OMW, the on my way, which has always been there for a long time. But, but this is great if you really want to step up how quickly you type and maybe you don't want to type out maybe long email addresses and things like that. Another feature that's been around for a while that I don't notice a lot is when people screen record, for instance. So to screen record, 
It's very, very simple. It's in your control center. You click on the record button and then you can either long press on that to decide whether you want your microphone on and off, which is one of the cool things about that. And then once it starts down, there's a three second timer. You switch out of the control center and then you see a little red icon that's now hovering over and on top of the actual time on the iPhone itself. And then whenever you're finished, instead of going back to the control center and clicking the record button, you can just click on that red little icon on the top left of your iPhone and it'll stop recording. Another awesome hack, which I think is great for, you know, vertical video, and maybe if you wanna make a TikTok or YouTube short or something like that, one of the biggest annoyances when using the video camera on the iPhone is that if you have maybe a Spotify song playing or something with Apple Music or YouTube, if you're playing anything in the background on your iPhone and then you go press to record something, then that music is gonna turn off and default to the microphone and the audio on the actual camera itself. But if you wanna bypass this, all you have to do is press whatever song you wanna play on your Spotify playlist or whatever the case may be, then go into your camera app, stay into the photo section of the camera app, do not go to the video, and then you just long press on the camera button itself or the shutter button and then slide it to the right, and then you're recording with the music still playing in the background, and it shows up in your photo library exactly like that. So sticking with this sound and the background noises and things like that, if you go into your control center and you have that little ear icon, which is the ambient noise sensor, you long press on that and then you get a new menu. And in that new menu, you actually have the ability to use that as a white noise machine and play some background sounds to get you focused and concentrated. There's a million applications that promise to have a ton of different background noises and ambient sounds and white noise. But this one, I think it has like six to eight different ones that are built in natively. And these are directly from the settings, directly from Apple. So this is enough for me personally. So if you guys wanna have some background noise going on directly from your control center, by all means, that's exactly how you do it. So now let's move on to tip number three. And this one, in my opinion, is one of the coolest ones that I've seen in a while because it makes your life just that much easier. So in the keyboard, if you're in Safari or maybe typing in an email in your mail application, if you type out the actual URL itself and then you go and press a period to then do a .com or a .net or a .edu, all you have to do is long press on the period on the keyboard and then all those options come pre-populated for you to just click on and go from there, which is something I didn't know existed until literally about a week ago. So that one is a game changer, just being able to add a quick .com or .edu at the end of any URL. Another interesting one is actually on your home screen and this is gonna be a little bit different depending on which iOS version you're on. If you're on iOS 15 and below, then you should just have a couple of dots on the bottom of your screen on the home screen itself. And then depending on when you're watching this, you're either on the iOS 16 beta or the regular iOS 16 release, there's gonna be a little search button on the bottom of your home screen above the dock. But if you hold that down, you can actually scroll your finger to the right and left to quickly change between home screens. The same applies to anybody on iOS 15 or below. It's just a matter of what it looks like, but the function is exactly the same. So you either have the search button that you're scrolling between or you have the physical dots that are on the screen itself that you can also scroll in between. The next feature is inside of the calculator app itself. So I use a calculator app a ton. I wish they would bring it to the freaking iPad to give us a nice calculator app. They finally gave us the weather app, but now let's get a calculator on the iPad. But on the iPhone, if you're just typing something in on the calculator and maybe you added one too many zeros or one too many ones or whatever the case may be, you can actually just, instead of pressing AC to clear out the entire thing, you can actually swipe to the right with your finger where the numbers are and you can delete one digit from the right side and it keeps doing that until they're all gone. The next tip actually refers to the Maps application. And this is the same for Google Maps and Apple Maps. But if you go into one of these applications, normally to zoom in and out with these applications, you like pinch to zoom or you know crop it closer together to zoom out and things like that. But a much simpler way, especially if you're in one-handed use and you don't wanna use your other hand, you can actually double tap and on that second tap, you hold it down and then you scroll up and down. So if you scroll up, it'll zoom in. If you scroll down while you're holding it down, then it's gonna zoom out. And I think this is a great implementation, makes it a lot easier. This next feature has been around for a long time and I've seen it circulating, especially in YouTube Shorts. I've known this for years now at this point. If you wanna move multiple apps at the same time on your home screen or maybe into a folder and you're reorganizing everything, all you have to do is go into jiggle mode or wiggle mode, whatever it's actually called. You grab the application that you wanna move and then with your other finger or your other hand, you start tapping on the other applications that you're trying to move and then you can move them into certain folders, move them into other pages, hide them away, whatever you wanna do. And then to go on that same vein, the same thing applies with your photos. So if, if you go into your photo library, go into your photos application, you can actually click and hold down on one photo, move it around, and then the same thing that you were doing with the app icons, you can do with your photos. So you start clicking on different photos, then you go into multitasking, maybe go into a note, or go into an iMessage, and you just drop all those photos right in there. And then another thing with the photos application is that you can actually zoom in and out of your photo library. So if you're somebody like me who has like five to 10,000 photos of over the years and you don't wanna just scroll through all the way back, 
Very, very simple. You just zoom out and then all the photos get really, really tiny, but it gives you the dates of when those photos were taken. And then you can zoom back in to wherever you want to zoom back in when you're ready to actually find the photo that you want to find. So if you're like me and you watch these types of videos all the time, just to get the most out of your iPhone, then normally the person talking says, hey blank, you know, S-I-R-I. -I. And then it normally launches Siri on your phone itself. One way to avoid this is A, you can turn it off, but I actually like to keep it on, but turn it into Siri with text. So it's still the same Siri, but instead of actually talking to her, you're just typing and texting to her. And the way to do this is very, very simple. Go into your settings, go into accessibility, then go into Siri and then type to Siri. So the function is very simple. If you wanna ask her what the weather is, you just long press on your actual power button, she pops up and then you ask her, hey, what's the weather? And then you're good to go. So it, the same exact concept, but instead of voice to talk, you're actually just texting to talk. And then to stay with that power button, I'm sure you didn't know that if you triple tap the power button, it's actually an accessibility shortcut menu. So the way to turn this on, go into your settings, go into accessibility, and then go into accessibility shortcuts. And there's an abundance of different things that you can actually do. No, you can't map it perfectly, so you can't like launch an application if you want, but there are different shortcuts in there that are pretty useful. So what I normally do is I have the magnifier in there, and then I also have guided access in there, which I'm gonna talk to you in a little bit as another tip. So I've been actually using guided access a lot recently because we did have a child and she likes to use the phone a lot. She likes to just play with the phone in her hand and she's pressing a bunch of random buttons. So what guided access does is allows you to freeze whoever's using your phone on a certain application. Very simple to turn it on. You just go to settings, accessibility, then turn on that guided access. And basically whenever you turn on guided access, it's gonna prompt you to put in a password. You put that password in and then the app will not allow you to leave that application. So the phone will stay on that application. You can see here that we have YouTube. So YouTube is fully functional. You can click on whatever video you want on YouTube, but if you wanna leave the YouTube application, you cannot do that until you triple tap again on the power button, press on guided access, then put your passcode in and then everything will go back to normal. So this is a great function, especially if you wanna keep somebody on a single application. You don't want them illegally scrolling in your phone and things like that. So guided access is a wonder. The next two features I'm gonna talk about are iOS 16 specific. So if you are not on iOS 16, you probably won't have this functionality. But if you are, the first one we're gonna talk about is having an auto PNG creator and background removal inside of your photos application. And it works very well. So this is awesome, especially for somebody like me who makes a lot of thumbnails and maybe wants to pull out an iPhone or pull out an iPad from an image, but it also works well with images of people. So all you have to do is go into any image and as long as it has some sort of, you know, focus in the image, whether it's a person or an object, you just long press on the image itself and then you'll see kind of these like waves go over a section of the actual image itself. And then you, once it's done, all you have to do is move it and then it turns into a PNG, which is something that has no background. So you can see that they removed the background of my dog, wherever the dog was, and I can move just my dog into my notes app, into my iMessage, and I can create whatever I want with it. Or you can move it and add it to a different background. So I think this is awesome. And there were so many different applications that did this for you for a price, but Apple has just cannibalized that. And now you can do it natively with pretty much any image. The accuracy varies depending on how high the contrast is between the foreground and the background. So the more contrast there is, the better the image is gonna come out. But for the most part, even with very, very lack of contrasty images, it works relatively well. And then the next iOS 16 feature, which doesn't really improve your life or anything like that, it's just something that they did add that I wanted to share with everybody, is that finally Apple brought the battery percentage to the iPhones, which hasn't been there in a very long time. All you do is you go into your settings, go into battery, and on the top there's a little toggle that lets you turn off and on the battery percentage. So we're coming to the end of the video here. I think this is tip number 23 or 24 but this one has to do with the keyboard again. So let's say you're typing out a message and you wanna go and just put in one single number, like you don't wanna switch the entire keyboard. All you have to do is on the bottom left of the keyboard where the number switcher is, just press and hold it there. It's gonna to change to the numbers. Then you drag your finger to whatever number you wanna pick. And then once you pick that singular number, it's gonna go back to the regular letter keyboard. So if that's something that you wanna do, it's very, very easy, especially if you're in a situation where you only need to send one number, like, hey, let's meet at nine o'clock. Hey, let's do something at one o'clock, things like that. If you wanna type in more than just one number, then just switch the keyboard. But this is just a quick way to quickly put in one number and then go back to the regular keyboard. And then the final two features and little nuanced things that I wanna talk about are using two fingers to select multiple things at once. And this works with a lot of the native applications. So let's say you have a bunch of notes and you wanna delete a lot of them in a row. All you have to do is with your two fingers, instead of selecting one each individually, all you have to do is with two fingers, start from the bottom and then just drag up and it'll start selecting all of the things 
and all of the notes that both of those fingers go over. Same thing applies for the mail application, same thing applies for iMessage. So if you wanna get rid of a bunch of them or select a bunch of them to leave unread, that's a feature which I found very, very helpful for myself. And then this last feature is also iOS 16 specific, so keep that in mind for this last feature. And it has to do with screenshots. So normally to take a screenshot, you just press the volume up button and the power button. It takes a screenshot, you know, you can doodle on it, you can do whatever you want, you can send it off, you can save it. But now there's a cool feature because a lot of the time when I'm sending a screenshot to somebody, I personally don't need that screenshot. So in the menu on the top left, they added a new feature called copy and delete. So what it does is if you press that button, it'll copy it to your clipboard, but delete it and it won't save it into your photos. So then you can just go to your iMessage, go to your note and paste it right there. And then you're good to go. So those are the 27 features. So those are all the features that I wanted to show off that I use pretty much on a daily basis at this point because everything just makes my life a little bit easier. They're all like nuanced features that Apple never talks about. So I wanted to highlight these so you guys can start playing with them on your own iPhones. If I had to pick one feature out of all of these, I would have to pick two. It would have to be the guided access, but that's very use case specific because you know if you don't have a kid, then it doesn't really matter unless you're handing your phone around a lot, but that's perfect for if you wanna hand an app to a kid for them not to go all over your phone and maybe take pictures by accident or whatever the case may be. And then also the instant background removal with iOS 16. That one's gonna be a game changer for a lot of people, especially a lot of creatives who maybe make thumbnails, you know, get a lot of different PNGs from the internet and things like that. So those are my two favorite features, but leave some comments down below of A, any of these features that you didn't know, and B, maybe leave a top three feature list of the features that you found on here that you're gonna try out next. But if you did make it to the end of the video, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know that you made it to the end. And if you guys wanna watch some more videos like this, definitely subscribe and maybe click on one of these two videos right here because we'll be making a lot more of these videos. But until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. Peace. Had to wear the blue light glasses today.